Okay, so I thought I'd do something slightly different as we get towards the end of the day. Um, so I was looking at the, the list of topics from the, the abstracts that we originally had, and I think there's seems like a few common themes here. And so um, I'm kind of the, the upstream maintainer of the OVS kernel module in Linux. So I thought rather than just kind of making a presentation and going forward with it, I would take out some common themes from the day um, and try and fill in a few gaps from what we missed earlier and, and that kind of thing. So start off by apologizing for having really bad slides because I made them on the fly. So they're just in time slides. Um, but it, it may be somewhat of an interesting discussion. So kind of the, the first theme that obviously came up was performance. So it seemed like the, the throughput was generally on par with you know, most of the existing solutions. Um, you know, there's definitely ways that it can be improved, either things like NetMap or DPDK. And you know, those are obviously things that we should continue to, to push for. But it's not probably a you know, disadvantage of, of having all this additional flexibility that you need for software-defined networking or, or any of the new models that people are trying to use. Um, on the other hand, you know, an obvious weakness is flow setups. By, by pushing up more things to user space, you tend to trade off performance there. And so um, some of the existing stuff that you know, Jerry had pointed out earlier in the day, um, you know, hopefully we're actually making quite a bit of progress there, both in terms of reducing the number of flow steps that need to happen, and then obviously using multi-threading to spread out the number of cores we can use. So both of those are pretty early pieces of work. So there's obviously a lot of new um, you know, low-hanging fruit that comes with these new models. In particular, Thomas pointed out that some of the, the locks need you know, breaking down into to finer granularity. But you know, these are all things that are, are pretty obviously can be worked on and you know, more of incremental improvements. So that, that's definitely a, you know, a good area that I like to be in. You know, lots of, of work that we, we can just go ahead and, and start working on. So then the, the second big category of things that came up, and the one that I think has the most unresolved questions, is really how to integrate additional functionality into OVS. So o OVS, I think, is really good for you know, some L2 and L3 type workloads. Um, you know, these are things that tend to match pretty well with the OpenFlow model of doing things. And they also tend to be fairly stateless and also pretty common. Um, you know, once you start getting into L4 through L7 services, you really have an explosion in the number of things that you might try to do, um, you know, and also the complexity as well. They tend to be very stateful in many cases, and, and generally there's just all kinds of crazy things that, that you can imagine. So I, I think that's probably the, the biggest area to, to focus on, so that's kind of where I, I made my slides. Um, and, and so right now, OVS is set up as really a, a programmable flow engine. And this is where it gets most of its power beyond what you could do previously. Um, you, know, you can really treat it as almost like a, a CPU in some ways. So I, I mentioned that you, know, you have some of these primitives like you know, subroutines, registers, stacks, you know, all, all kinds of things you know, that we've tried over ground in the past to figure out how to make things more and more programmable. And that's obviously the goal, you know, not restrict people in what they can do by what we can envision right now. So that's pretty handy. Um, however, that doesn't really work quite as well for other types of services, which as I mentioned are much more complex. And so this is where you have something like NetFilter and all this existing networking components and it's really this, this huge library of, of code out there. Um, and you know, just imagining the, the, the range of things that you might want to do with a common use case such as NAT, it, it really starts to, to grow and grow once you start thinking about ALGs and different protocols and, and all that kind of stuff. Um, and so not only is it it's somewhat hard to fit into a flow-based model, um, but it's just a lot of code that you, want, you definitely want to take advantage of what's there uh, without question. And um, the other thing is a, a lot of the, the OVS model actually is very flexible about being able to reinterpret protocol fields. So you might be able to 
treat a, a, v, a V line header as a partitioning mechanism, or you could swap that out for a GRE key, for example. And if you use a, a programmable mechanism, they're just identifiers. It really doesn't matter. Um, but with some of these existing blocks, you are really trying to, you have to kind of work within the existing protocols, uh, and you're really just passing in new configuration as opposed to programming them. So one example where I think we've kind of successfully merged the, the two of these, and that's kind of the goal that I'm driving at, is, is how we get the benefits of programmability while taking advantage of all the, this existing code, is with QoS. So um, we really want to be able to choose QoS um, you know, queues and you know, use all, you know, our existing um, computation mechanisms but we, we can't do that on a flow basis at, at the really deep implementation because QoS tends to be a, a per packet operation and not something that really matches with the flow. So what we did here is we used the, the flow engine to uh, choose a queue. And so you can use your registers, you can use your multiple lookup tables. And we use the existing configuration code um, to pass in those queue parameters. And then that means that on a, a per flow basis, we can choose the queue, and then the existing TC code can do the, the per packet work. So in this case, you have kind of both the uh, OVS code and the, the in-kernel code working together very nicely, and you have the advantages of both. Um, and all OVS is doing in this case is just setting the SKB priority. So there's not exactly you know, a lot of duplication of code here, but one line. Um, so, so that's nice. Um, it, it's obviously a, a pretty specific solution, and we really want to expand this into all different kinds of things, including services. Again, NAT is typically one that, that comes up over and over again. And so, so how, how might you do this? Um, well, so, so the interesting thing is a lot of times this problem actually comes down to one of partitioning. So you want to be able to take this existing functionality and break it up into kind of any arbitrary subset of um, you know, state tables or configuration or, or that kind of thing. And th those are really the two main things. So you might have, for example, IP addresses that you might um, are, are using for NAT. And you also have things like contract tables, which are typically just partitioned based on a, a five tuple and not any additional set of fields. Now, we already do have a mechanism for partitioning this, um, and that's namespaces. And you, know, you could think of a few different methods of doing this, um, you know, and some of them might be in, in, um, you know, more appropriate for different solutions or you know, trade-offs and so on. But, but this one is definitely the, the nicest because it, well, one, it already exists, and, and two, it essentially partitions the existing network stack fairly completely. So there aren't little bits that are missing or, or things that you have to continue updating uh, or implementing, which you might have to do in other situations. So this can be done today, actually, without any additional work. And so you could imagine basically taking a packet, uh, running it through OVS, and selecting a namespace somehow uh, using whatever flows you feel like. And then once you've done that, you basically output it to a, a port, which is associated with a given namespace. Um, that, that partitions everything. It, it goes through, does whatever it is that this, this box um, you've configured in the past is. And then it, it pops out, potentially goes back into OVS or outputs it. And you could even run this a few different times if you had a number of different services. Now, let's say, I think this is a fairly generic solution. Um, it, it does have a, a few drawbacks with the way it's currently implemented. Um, but you know, going through ports is not really all that scalable. If you tend, tend to have uh, you know, tens of thousands of these individual spaces, it's not really the, the nicest way to look at or, or implement it. Um, and, and you also might want to have additional metadata there you're passing between your, your programmable flow engine and the services. But I, mean, I, I think at a high level, both of these are fairly um, solvable. And I, I know that this is actually a mechanism in general that a lot of people are, are trying to use to, to shoehorn um, OVS and 
existing functionality together. So th this kind of seems the most natural to me. Now, so since this did come up um, earlier in the day, I, I thought that I would kind of contrast it and then actually just throw out for a little bit of discussion uh, to see if we can resolve some of these ideas. So th these are my rough interpretation of, uh, of some of the, the earlier things that come up. And, and certainly, please feel free to correct me if I'm misrepresenting anything. But basically, you know, two other approaches that have been proposed are more directly integrating some of the, the net filter or, or other code into OVS so that it's either an action or you know, it runs at various points in the pipeline, that kind of thing. And so that, that certainly has the potential advantage of being uh, a tighter integration because you know, it, it effectively becomes part of OVS. Um, and it also may potentially be less expensive because you don't have a any extra you know, uh, data structures or, or anything else you know, beyond what you actually need. It, it obviously has the disadvantages uh, that were pointed out that you really need to figure out how to reconcile these two models, which is not always easy. Um, you know, and since they're so tightly coupled, you, you, there isn't as much room for loosely you know, passing packets between them, but you, you have to figure out how to, um, how to fit them together. Yeah, it's, yeah, so that, that's one issue. Also, um, a lot of times the OVS user space assumes that it knows exactly what the, the data path is doing um, because you know, it's designed to program it. And so if things change or disappear or something like that, then you can get kind of interesting results. Yeah. The, the, the IP stack. So that's an possible solution. Um, and then the other one that w was brought up earlier this morning was allowing you to have um, you know, kind of global blocks of, of code into OVS. And in some ways, this could be seen as the same as the former, in that you'd be able to um, you know, directly hook things into the, the OVS stack, uh, but you'd obviously be able to put in whatever you feel like is. And so this obviously, if you can add new code, it's infinitely flexible. You know, anything that you can imagine hopefully can be implemented. Um, however, it has a, a somewhat of a downside that if you're trying to reuse a lot of this existing code functionality, um, then it, it becomes much more difficult to integrate with the rest of the stack um, because you have, you know, you've written your own. Um, and it, it also, if you have things like offloads, they don't naturally get picked up, et cetera, um, which is an advantage of, of doing it. It's great. Yeah. Well, I mean, so, so I think there's two things. Um, I mean, one, OVS, especially in the kernel, is a software switch, right? So that there's the, the layers that sit on top of it, you know, whether they're aimed to uh, software or hardware is kind of a somewhat orthogonal issue. Uh, I mean, OVS has definitely tried to, or aims to be able to implement essentially whatever control protocol you feel like, um, and not just limit it to the, the subset of functionality. Um, but I think also in, in hardware, you also tend to have functional blocks that you 
would jump to. So it's, it's actually not completely different, I think. I mean, obviously those blocks won't be the same. Um, but... Uh, Sure, sure, but... Sure, sure. I think that's a, a slightly different problem, though. So I think that's more of a, an upper-level communication issue, um, whereas in, in in-kernel modules, effectively, uh, the counterpart of an ASIC, right? Um, you know, both of them, you, you would, you know, both of them are the, the packet processing pipeline, and so, sure, they, they absolutely will have different capabilities if you're trying to mismatch them, but, uh, you know, the, definitely within this particular pipeline, the goal is to expose as much capability as, as we can, even if a, a other data paths might not have that as well. Sure, yeah, I, I don't disagree with that. So. Yeah. Yeah. My guess is that most of the the rule or the the functional blocks would be essentially pre-compiled, right, as opposed yeah. to dynamically. Yeah. That's right. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, so I actually don't. I think kind of the some of the existing OVS goals and the dynamic code are somewhat similar, and they both are trying to reduce to a a, a set of primitives. Um, you know, things like. Even the resubmit action, you know, is, is you know, well, a loop, obviously. Oh yeah, yeah, we were talking about lunch. Yeah, so. yeah, yeah. Um, yes. So, it's kind of a discussion of what level of mechanism 
falls out of it. So. Cool. Anything? Uh, then we solved all the problems in OVS. <laughs> Um, yeah, actually. So, so I don't like the, the user space based stuff that we have right there, have right now. Um, one, it's slow, as you mentioned, and two, it's kind of half-assed connection tracking. Um, so what I would prefer to do is essentially use you know, whatever mechanism that we decide here and, and try to, to link it together. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So, so yes, so use the, the in-kernel connection tracking code and then link it together with the rest of OVS using some mechanism. Yeah, so, so that's, that's, that's the goal that, that I'm trying to strive for here. Uh, uh, yeah, you, you have both, I think, right? So. Right, so, so you could yeah, do this L3 lookup if that's what you care about, care about and hand it over to this connection tracking blob. Yep, yeah, yeah, yeah. so that, that's the goal. So. Yeah, yeah. No, I mean, the the goal is is definitely to use the existing contract mechanisms, um, and then the question is how you transfer state, or not 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 like connection tracking state, but but how you say partition them or or that kind of thing, how you get that programmability uh, together. Yeah, I mean that would effectively be part of going through this connection tracking. Stage. I, I know. <laughs> yeah, I, I didn't. Say, I just wrote the slides. I didn't say that. You know, I <laughs> it's a discussion. You know, <laughs> throw out the gauntlet. So, I, I think probably. Um, you could have, so if you do like an OVS flow lookup first, um, and then you say index into a connection tracking table um, using that. So what, what, what's your example? Sure. Mm -hmm. Right, right. Yeah, so I mean, I think it depends on like, what the use case is as to whether or not that actually matters. So I think a, a common one would be um, if you want to partition the, the contract table using you know, some field in the OVS flow table, you know, Jerry key, whatever, right, um, that you wouldn't otherwise care about. So to do that, you basically could do an OVS lookup first and then um, you know, use that as a, a means, you know, to up with some identifier and use that as a means um, to then dis distinguish between less fine-grained flows uh, in the contract entry. So, I mean, I think it'll probably be kind of a evolutionary process uh, to figure out how all these things work together. But like I said, when I mentioned with partitioning earlier, that, that seems to be one of the the burning examples that at least I've heard of several times, um, and at least a reasonable place to start. But obviously having more examples of you know, different use cases and, and how you might want to fit these together uh, is always helpful. Um, so it's so so probably for the most part you would have a lot of OVS flows mapping onto one 
connection tracking. You can just unplug it or something. Um, just because o o OVS is pretty fine-grained um, right now. So that's likely the direction that it would go. Um, Um, I, I think it's less likely. I, I could probably construct some examples. Um, you know, if the the contract you know has handles. Right, right, yeah, yeah. That's, that's definitely the the direction that I would focus on first. Um, but like I said, you know, different use cases and and um, you know, thinking about this type of problem, I think it's the where we need lots of input. <laughs> Thank <laughs> you.